How's it going guys? And in this video we're going to be talking about cholesterol tests. These are also referred to as lipid panels. I just had one and um, I wanted to share what I've learned about it because uh, for me I had an interesting experience I can talk a little bit about. But um, yeah, so basically the whole point of these cholesterol tests is to determine the concentrations of cholesterols inside of your blood and specifically they are generally looking for your cholesterol levels and your triacylglyceride levels or TGs um, while you are in the fasting state and so because of that you need to not eat anything for at least 12 hours prior to the actual uh, blood drawing event and so um, in my case I stopped eating last night at about 7 and then I had my test done at uh, 10 a.m. Um, you know, I could have kept eating, but I wasn't hungry. So, uh, yeah, basically, um, you want to make sure you're in that fasting state. And the key outputs of these tests are the following. So overall cholesterol levels, um, but specifically the cholesterols that we're interested in are generally the LDLs. LDLs are the not good ones because those guys will aggregate and form these plaques. And these plaques can go off to create a heart attack or a stroke of some kind. Um, so they'll basically clump up into this little rock and then it'll, you know, find its way into a brain uh, artery somewhere and, and block the flow and that's what leads to strokes and that's when, you know, you go to the ER and they use a clot buster to break that up but, um, you know, LDLs are definitely some scary things that you want to make sure you are checking for and, um, you know, the, the key reason why it's so important to do these cholesterol tests is that it's asymptomatic most of the time. So. Um, you know, you can be living a pretty unhealthy lifestyle, sedentary, eating tons of junk food, sugars, high fats, um, you know, french fries, and, and I'm not saying it's, you know, it's okay to pick out, you know, on your, on your, uh, you know, special days, but like, um, oh, just doing this too much is what results in elevated LDL levels for prolonged periods of time, and uh, that's how you end up with getting uh, heart disease. Um, or stroke and so we need to monitor this stuff and that's the reason why we do this um, and then so LDLs not good one HDLs I think of them like sponges um, and so they're good guys because the HDLs will float around your bloodstream and they will find LDLs and they'll soak them up so those LDLs can't aggregate into those you know rock things that would go off and do a bunch of damage somewhere else in your body um, so checking those levels and then also you've got your triglycerides TGs uh, is how you abbreviate them and um, so these guys are what you check for to see if uh, there's something out of whack and ideally you would see these being on the lower side when you see elevated TG levels um, this can indicate that someone's overweight or diabetic um, or they've got a lifestyle disease like al alcoholism um, so that's what we're looking for um, smoking will also lead to this uh, and so in terms of when to start taking lipid panels or doing this whole cholesterol test thing, uh, from what I've read around the ages of nine to 11, and then, um, once you've started, so if you start at like age 10, uh, every five years, you're supposed to get this done to you. So 15, 20, 25. Um, so I'm 25. That's why I got mine, uh, when I did. And so, yeah. And then once you turn 65, it becomes an annual thing. Um, because it becomes even more important to just make sure that they're aware of these metrics sooner rather than later um, to make any appropriate lifestyle changes or uh, prescribed medications. Um, and so, yeah, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about in terms of, you know, energy sources that your body uses because this is stuff that kind of ties in with what I was learning in med school. I think it's kind of cool. Um, so with your fasting state, the whole reason why you got to wait at least 12 hours prior to getting your blood drawn is because um, once you've had a meal, so like if you just had some orange juice, that's gonna have sugar in it. Um, if you had some eggs, it's gonna have some protein in it. If you've had, you know, French fries, it's gonna have a bunch of uh, fats in it, uh, those oils. Um, and so once you've eaten that meal, you are in the quote unquote fed state for about three to four hours. And so during that time period, your that food is traveling through your intestine and the nutrients are getting absorbed into your bloodstream. And so during that time period, uh, your cells in your body are able to just kind of grab what they want out of the bloodstream, all that glucose, um, because they don't really need to worry about it and it's pretty easy for them. Um, but after about four hours in, you start to transition to um, the fasting state. And so 
um, during this fasting state, your liver, um, so there's no more of that free glucose circulating around your bloodstream from that meal you just had, your liver is having to uh, figure out how to turn its own glycogen reserves into glucose to keep things running as they normally should. And so insulin's going to go down, that insulin going down is going to basically tell your cells like chill out a little bit here. So like your muscle cells are, when they see insulin, they've got this thing called a GLUT4 receptor that tells them to just grab whatever glucose they can see. Um, and so as insulin levels decrease, as you move farther into or beyond that fed state, um, that's where we start seeing how um, a lot of the uh, glycogen reserves are going to start getting depleted in your liver. So that's called hepatic, meaning liver glycogen. Um, and so uh, as you run out of that hepatic glycogen, now your body kind of has to start saying, like, what am I going to get next here? And so that's where um, your fats, uh, so the lipids, the adipose tissues, will begin to um, do lipolysis, and they're going to start bumping up the levels of those triglycerides in the bloodstream. And so your cells, some cells in the body can take that triglyceride, and they can... Uh, basically figure out how to turn that and they can beta oxidize that and then do um, gluconeogenesis with that or um, spin the Krebs cycle or the, t the citric acid cycle with that um, to elevate levels of ATP within those cells. And then in addition to that, um, you can also start breaking down proteins and use the proteins for fuel sources. And so when your body is using those proteins, um, there's certain amino acids that are called gluconeogenic, which hopefully as the name implies, can be used to make glucose. And so basically with these, you can take an amino acid, you can turn it into pyruvate, and then within the liver, the liver can take that pyruvate and turn it into oxaloacetate, or OAA, and with OAA um, in that liver, they can then put it up back through um, kind of reverse glycolysis in a sense, um, and make glu glucose, and then it would ship out that glucose to other cells in your body. So um, that is how you can convert proteins into energy when you need to, um, although most of the time it's usually coming from uh, you know, those glycogen reserves in your liver. So, you know, when you're about to get that blood drawn after you've been fasting for at least 12 hours, the only energy in your body is really coming from that protein degradation or that protein metabolism, um, as well as the lipolysis that's going on inside of your fat tissues. And so in people who are very obese, um, because they've got such a huge reserve of lipids, they are able to do a bunch of lipolysis and have very high levels of those triglycerides present. And so that's what they're going to note during this um, screening is, you know, if you're within normal limits for that particular concentration of uh, triglycerides. And so um, now I can talk a little bit about my story with this, which is, um, you know, I, I'm not good at, at getting blood drawn uh, in general, but like, um, when I've been fasting, for me, uh, I was talking to the phlebotomist before this all happened too. Um, he said this is actually pretty common in guys, um, but like I really passed out hard because I hadn't eaten in about 14 hours. And, um, you know, I drink water. You can drink water, but nothing else. Um, no eating anything. Um, and so like when I got it drawn, my blood drawn, like I just, I was on the table because I knew I was going to pass out and I... Um, you know, my hands were tingling and I was sweating and I was, uh, I think it was called a vasovagal, but basically like, yeah, for me, it's not a fun experience. So I don't really enjoy doing this, but for the sake of my health, I guess I'll, uh, I'll put up with it. Um, but yeah, so still waiting on the results. Hopefully they're within normal limits. Um, but yeah, I just want to share with you guys a little bit about what is this whole lipid panel screening thing. And, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Hope my mother's doing well. Talk to you guys next time.